morning. You know, you will recall in the last class, we were interested in determining if a blast wave hits an object, how much of the wave gets transmitted into the object and how much gets reflected. Therefore, let us continue on that. You know, we you will recall we defined something known as an impedance z, which we said is equal to the, the change in pressure divided by the change in velocity. We call velocity as u prime, the change in pressure as p prime, the change in velocity as this. And in the limit that the wave is an acoustic wave, we defined and we determined an expression for this impedance, which we called as mechanical impedance as equal to the density of the medium into the sound speed in the particular medium. See, you will tell me that well, it is for in the limit of sound waves, that means a very weak shock waves. Is it really applicable for, for strong shock waves? We will take a look at that, but we will keep this assumption clear. It so happens that it can still be used and I will justify it a little later. But let us proceed with this impedance and the problem which we are considering is, supposing I have let us say a medium, some medium and into this medium, let us say a wave is propagating and uh, at, the, at the end of it, it meets some other medium let us say over here. How much of this wave gets transmitted into the second medium and how much gets reflected into the back into the first medium. Therefore, before we do that, I think we should have some feed for this impedance value which we called as mechanical impedance or impedance and let us put the values for some particular for some particular medium or some particular materials of construction. Let us say yes, I have some let us say medium. If the medium is let us say air, we found that the value of the of the impedance or we called as a mechanical impedance, the unit being you will recall it was Newton second by meter cube and the value for air was a, we determined to be something like 380, well the actual value is something like 440 Newton second by meter cube. Let us put down a few of these things, it will act as a guidelines to develop further on this. Let me give a few values for water, the value is around 1.5 into 10 to the power 6 Newton second by meter cube. For something like the tissues in our body, that is the fat tissues, in the body, the value is 1.33 into 10 to the power 6. Something like a muscle, muscle in the body, that means we are talking of human beings, we are talking of tissues and muscle, the value is around 1.7 into 10 to the power 6 Newton second by meter cube. When I consider a bone in the body, bone is something harder, the value is around 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 6. If I consider a brick which is used for a building, well the value is 7.4 into 10 to the power 6. Let us take one or two more materials, the glass is somewhat higher, let us say Pyrex glass the value is around 13 into 10 to the power 6. Well, if I consider steel, which is very much harder than brick, the value is around 46 into 10 to the power 6. And the last material which I consider is a hard material like tungsten, the value is around 101 into 10 to the power 6. Therefore, you see that the value changes from a few hundreds to several millions and it is these values which really decide whether the wave gets transmitted, whether how much of the wave gets reflected and we will keep this as a, as a, as a reference with which we can understand something more about the, the reflection and transmission of waves. But to be more clear about what this impedance really represents, we can tell ourselves well in the limit of let us say weak shock waves nearing an acoustic wave, what is happening? Well, u prime is something like maybe I can call it as p square, p prime square divided by u prime square. We are talking of molecular velocity fluctuations 
how much of the molecular velocity fluctuations represent as pressure fluctuations or pressure changes associated with molecular uh, velocity changes is what is in the limit what we derived the other day. Therefore, let us keep this as standby, let us let us now put the problem together, let us do how much of it gets reflected. Therefore, I say let me say I have a medium, two medium separated by a let us say an interface over here. Let us say on the left of this interface I have a medium which I say is medium A and right of this particular one let us say this is medium A over here, let us let, let me hatch the whole thing for you, this is in yellow color. The right side of this medium is let us say B, medium B which I show like this. This interface separates the two medium over here. Well, one could be air, one could be solid, one could be water, one could be solid, it could be different phases or maybe different gases. One could be hydrogen which is a very light gas, the other could be uh, air which is a little denser or could be a still denser gas and so on. This is the difference between these two medium. Well, I am interested if a wave is traveling, let us say a pressure wave, pressure wave is traveling into this medium A over here and it is incidence on this surface, how much of this pressure wave gets reflected and how much of this pressure wave gets transmitted into this particular medium, into the second medium. Well, let us put some numbers to it. Let us say the, the pressure wave has let us say an over pressure P prime over here. I say well it is P prime. This is incident on the surface. I say incident on the surface in medium A. Therefore, a uh, 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 over pressure P i A travels towards this particular interface that is towards this medium. What happens at the surface? Let us presume what gets reflected is P r at in the medium A, this is what is getting reflected and what gets transmitted into the medium B is equal to let us say P B prime over here. Therefore, we are considering this problem in medium A wave of amplitude or let us say a pressure wave of over pressure P prime A comes over here, gets reflected over here and in medium B because of this wave something gets transmitted. I want to determine this value that means I am interested in determining P B value, I am also interested in determining the reflected value. Therefore, to do this problem immediately I tell myself well I well I can do this problem because there is a increase in pressure over here because I have P prime over here, it further increases over here. Therefore, the net pressure P B prime at the interface is equal to the sum because at this interface I have some increase here, further some increase over here, it is equal to P i A over here prime plus uh, the, the what is reflected over here P r of A prime over here, this is my equation 1. Well, associated with these pressure changes or pressure fluctuations or let us say over pressures, there is also a velocity component. And let us now presume that the medium A has an impedance Z A and the medium B has an impedance let us say Z B. Now, what is going to happen? Because of this P prime over here, you know because of this pressure fluctuation there will also be a velocity fluctuation. Let us say that the velocity fluctuation associated with this incident wave is equal to U prime into I incident of A as well along with this that means I have a velocity perturbation shown in yellow. Similarly, the velocity perturbation associated with this reflected wave is going to be U prime incident you know this is reflected therefore R of A over here. Similarly, I also have a velocity perturbation associated with P B here. P, P prime B here and that is equal to well I have velocity perturbation U prime associated with B this is equal to U B prime. Now, at the interface what is happening some velocity comes here, some velocity is removed from here and therefore, the, the velocity perturbation for B I can write as let us write it out U prime B is equal to the value of U 
prime incident at a minus u prime reflected that is what is pulling it back into a over here. This, these are the two equations which I get. Now, I want to solve these equations to determine the value of p r a and p b, but then I, I note something. I note yes, I said there are two medium, this is the interface between these two media over here. Therefore, I can write the value of z a is equal to the impedance of a is equal to in terms of pressure and the associated velocity as equal to p prime I have incident of a divided by u prime incident of a. And similarly, I can also write the, the value for, for, this, for this reflected pressure, this is also equal to the value of reflected pressure at a divided by u prime reflected of a over here because in this case p prime by u prime is equal to this impedance p prime divided by u prime for the incident wave is equal to impedance i have this equation similarly i have the value of z b that is the impedance of b is equal to i have p b prime divided by the value of u prime of b now from this impedance equation for a I can determine the value of u i a is equal to if I write it here, it becomes p prime a divided by z a. I also get u prime reflected at a is equal to p reflected a fluctuation divided by z a or change here divided by z a. And therefore, and what do I get u b? u b prime is equal to p b prime by z b. And therefore, equation 2 now becomes I can write it as equal to p b prime divided by z b is equal to I, I write u prime a is equal to p i prime a divided by z a minus I have p r which is equal to u prime uh, u, u prime reflected a is equal to p r prime divided by z a And therefore, equation 2 now reduces to the form let us say equation 2a over here. Therefore, let us put these two equations together and what is it I get from equation 1 I get p i a p prime plus p prime reflected a is equal to that is this is equal to p prime b and from this particular equation what is it I get? Well, I get p prime a incident a divided by z a plus I get p prime reflected a divided by z a is equal to p prime b divided by z b over here. This becomes my this is my first equation, this is my second equation which I called as 2a. I want to solve these equations to determine the value of p r p prime r a that is the, the, the pressure over pressure of the reflected as a function of the over pressure of the incident. I also want to determine what is transmitted, what is the pressure transmitted over here. Therefore, to be able to solve this well I find it is p prime plus p prime for incident and reflected I have z a why not multiply the second equation by z a in which case I get p prime i a plus p I think we have made a mistake over here it is equal to p prime a by z a minus p r a by z a therefore the value here is equal to minus over here therefore the, the value is if I multiply by z a I get p i a minus p prime r a is equal to p b prime into I have multiplied by impedance of medium A divided by impedance of medium B. Therefore, this becomes my equation 2, this becomes my equation 1, this is my equation 1. Well, I add the 2 together, if I add the 2, the reflected component gets knocked down, I get 2 p i a prime is equal to I get p b prime into 
1 plus z a by z b and if I subtract from this equation I subtract this well it becomes minus p i plus is equal to minus therefore I get 2 p reflected a prime is equal to p b prime well I take p b prime outside and I get 1 minus z a by z b over here. Now, I want to solve these t two equations for the reflected components and therefore, let us let us first get one value, let us get the value of p b prime. How, how can I get the value of p b prime? Well, I use this equation and what does it tell me? From this equation I say p b prime is equal to twice the incident value into z b divided by z b plus z a or rather I get from this equation I can write the value, let me write it over here. P b prime is equal to the value of 2 p i a to p incident value i into I get the value where what comes over here is z b upon z z b divided by z a plus z b. That is z a plus z b or rather z b plus z a or rather I take the 2 inside and if I have to express it in terms of p i a, I can write this as equal to p i a incident in a into 2 z b divided by z b plus z a. And now I substitute it in the second equation to get the value of the reflected value, I get p prime reflected in medium a is equal to I get the same value here p in p prime of the instant value and if I were to substitute it well I have I have taken this this is 2 divided by 2 that means p r a is equal to p b by 2 2 cancels off and in the denominator I have z b by z a now it becomes z b minus z a divided by z b plus z a. Therefore, what is it we have done? We have been able to get the pressure which propagates in medium B as a function of the pressure in medium A in terms of, of the impedance of B and the impedance of A. Therefore, this is, this is precious because now we are able to get a value of the, of the pressure which gets transmitted into the medium. Therefore, in this particular problem I tell myself well I can determine this value in terms of the incident value of the, uh, the, the pressure over pressure and I also get the reflected value which is equal to z b minus z a divided by z b minus z a. Well, this is all about the derivation we are able to get the value of the reflected of the transmitted pressure in medium b we are able to get the reflected value in medium a. Let us try to uh, discuss this result and see what it really represents. Let us consider this medium again. Let, let me erase out some of the things over here such that I can use the portion below this to, to be able to represent some physical conditions. Supposing I say well this medium is something like let us say air for as an example for which the z a is around let us say 440 Newton. 440 Newton second by meter cube. This I say is something like steel or some material for which the value is around very much higher almost of the order of 4 into 10 to the power 7. Therefore, in this case what is we are talking of is z b very much greater than z a. What is going to happen? Let us take a look at the expression. What is going to happen? Let us say now in this case I have medium A over here which is let us say air. The second medium is let us say steel over here for which the impedance is very much higher. Now, let us say I have a shock wave. A shock wave is like this I have an over pressure and this is my magnitude of the pressure which is going towards the wave. And now what is going to be the wave which gets transmitted into this medium? If I have this which is incident let us say this is my p prime a over here what gets transmitted is this magnitude multiplied by if I were to take a look at this 
it is going to be 2 that is we are telling 2 z b into z a plus z b. That means, the magnitude of the pulse which gets transmitted into steel is going to be higher and this is what gets transmitted into my particular medium. And is there something what is going to be reflected? Well, what is reflected we saw is equal to z b minus z a. Let me write it down z b minus z a divided by z a plus z b. We told ourselves well b is very much greater than a therefore, this is a strongly positive number of the similar magnitude because z a is very small and therefore, I am going to get the same magnitude which is reflected back and therefore, I tell myself well this is the reflected component. this is the transmitted component and now I am in business I am able to find out the transmitted pressure wave I am able to get the reflected pressure or the reflected shock wave and this is how we do problem. But this was for the particular case of z b greater than z a. Can I do this problem? Let us take the other example. Let us take the example of z b that is the second medium being less than z a. What is it I will get? Well, in this case let us consider the reverse, let us still consider the case of steel. Let us consider the case of air as medium B now, this is A as the medium. Therefore, what is going to happen? In this case let us again sketch out what is going to happen, this is the particular interface at which the two media come in, this is media A. and you have the second media this is B over here, this is the interface between the two media and now into the media I have something like a shock is coming over here, this is the amplitude over here. What gets transmitted? Well, I find that Z B is smaller and whereas, is a day is very much higher therefore, what gets transmitted is little lower. This is what it gets transmitted into the medium and what is reflected? Well, if I take a look at reflected I have z b is less than z a it is negative that means, what goes as a compression gets reflected as an expansion rather what is going to happen it is an expansion wave behind the expansion wave well it is something like the opposite of this I have compression behind the expansion wave it gets reflected as a expansion wave. I will repeat this again because this is important you know you have a compression wave which is moving towards the interface and what gets reflected is not the compression but just the expansion that means this is the pressure I have still a drop in pressure and what gets reflected is something like an expansion wave. What do we mean by this? You know why should uh, why should something which travels as a compression that is a strong over pressure get reflected as an expansion is you know you have this particular surface and when it meets the surface over here well the surface relaxes because it it is very much rarer and when surface relaxes what happens is well the surface relaxes and therefore, what expands is going to be much 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 it is an expansion process over here and therefore, what we get is an expansion wave or rather we tell ourselves well at the surface I cannot really have anything over here, but the but the media expands over here and what reflects back is something like an expansion wave over here. And therefore, we tell ourselves well based on these expressions I also tell myself that when the impedance of two media A and B are such that when A is greater than B I have a compression reflected as a compression back over here and something is great which gets transmitted is even of greater value greater pressure which gets transmitted over here. But the moment when I talk of the impedance of medium A being less than or, or impedance of, of let us say medium of the second medium B being very much less than this what happens is well a, a compression gets reflected as an expansion and I get transmission of a 
compression or a shock into the medium. That is the shock reflection becomes an expansion and therefore, now if I slightly generalize the problem and if I talk of a problem in the following context, like let us say I have a medium over here, some medium here which let us say has a high value of impedance, let us say I have Z B over here, I have Z A over here which is small impedance that means Z A is less than Z B and I put this small impedance again over here Z A over here. What is going to happen? Well, this could be some material like steel or bone or anything which is heavier. Uh, let, let us say I am talking in terms of some heavier material over here, some material and therefore, when the pressure wave comes over here, what gets reflected is some, some it gets reflected because ZB being greater than A, it reflects as a compression wave. That means, I have compression wave coming over here, compression wave getting reflected over here and what gets propagated is a, a larger magnitude of the compression wave. Let me show it in ordinary white chalk. Well, I have a compression wave over here and when compression wave, this is one interface, let us say interface 1. I have the second interface here because I am considering this media to be restricted. That means, I have interface 2. When this pressure wave comes over here, it gets reflected as an expansion wave. That means, it is something like this, it is expanding over here and what gets transmitted is something like a smaller compression wave over here. Let us take a look at this, what will this result in? I have a wave, compression wave going, I have over pressure here, behind this there, there is an expansion. That means, behind this initial compression wave I have expansion and particles over here are now moving away because it is an expansion behind this, particles are moving here and then what happens? The reflected wave comes over here. When the reflected wave comes over here, I have expansion, particles are moving like this. Therefore, a particle here which is subjected to the shock wave is pulling it in this direction. A particle which is the same particle or a similar particle than adjacent particle when it is subjected to the expansion wave is pulling in this particular direction and therefore, what is going to happen? The, the material gets pulled like this and the material fails and this type of failing is known as spall or spalling of the material. Therefore, we tell ourselves whenever I have a, a material whose impedance is higher than the impedance into which it is traveling, well and what could happen is when, when the value of the medium here is less than medium over here. I get an expansion and the particles therefore, one is pulling, another is pulling, I have a tensile failure and therefore, we say the material spalls, spalls and therefore, the material fails. Therefore, using this example, that means, we are now able to say something about, we are talking of the, of the transmitted wave, we are talking of the reflected wave and using this, let us try to extrapolate a little bit and talk little more about the different applications of this scheme or transmitted and the reflected waves. Let me use this table and again give you one, one application which all of us are familiar this, this we will keep using, let us record it in our minds, we tell ourselves well when Z B is such that it is less than Z A that is the second medium is less than the first medium, well I have this problem and therefore, let us see how it can be applied. You know, all of us are familiar, we talk of kidney stones, you know, when the calcium in the body is large or some maybe the food stuff we eat is such that we do not drink sufficient amount of water. In the kidneys, we have stones being formed and therefore, let us take a look at this. In the kidney, well, a stone is formed, it is more like calcium, maybe a stone is formed, let us say over here. Let me now enlarge it and say, well, the small stone is formed, I say this is a small stone which is formed in the kidney over here. It is in the medium of fluid and that fluid is something let us say water, therefore, it is in water. I have something like a stone which is formed in the kidney and the kidney and maybe it attaches itself to the, to the uh, uh, material of the kidney which is something like a tissue let us say, therefore, we are talking of a tissue over here 
which which has a impedance let us say about 1.3 into 10 to the power 6. We are talking of a stone which is something like a bone has a value of impedance that is z over here is equal to 7 into 10 to the power 6. We say we have water which is around 1 into 10 to the power 6. Therefore, we are talking of a system wherein I have a stone over here which is in a medium of that means, the stone has a higher value of impedance compared to the impedance of water and the impedance of this. You will also recall over here maybe water, fat tissues and muscle have almost similar values of impedance around let us say 1.2 to 1.7 type of situation. Whereas, if I look at bone the value is higher, if I look at air well it is very much less than these quantities and therefore, what is it happening? I have let us now label these things together in some form. Let us say this is material A, let us say this is material B, medium B, this is medium C. Well, you know what is going to happen? Let us now say I sort of direct a shock wave into the body, that means I focus the shock wave onto this particular stone over here. What is going to happen? Well, a uh, uh, shock is going to go through this, it gets transmitted. Well, it gets reflected also, yes I know it gets reflected and it gets transmitted into this, well a shock gets transmitted into this. But the moment it comes to the other surface, what is going to happen? Well, I have the impedance which is less and therefore, it gets reflected as a, as a expansion wave that means something like this, it is an expansion wave, this is a compression wave, this is an expansion wave and now in this particular stone if I consider and then of course, something is further transmitted into this medium, it is quite small what is getting transmitted. That means, I have something which is coming here, it comes here, gets reflected into this. Therefore, when I, when I look at the picture of the stone, what I get is, well considering this as a, a, a body in which we are focusing our interest, well this is the incident wave and what is getting reflected is an expansion. Behind the behind the wave which is propagating in this direction, I have expansion process taking place, I have expansion taking place therefore, the, the particles in the stone are being pulled like this because of spalling that is it is a tensile failure, the stone uh, fragments and therefore, by passing a, 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 a shock wave into your kidney, I, I sort of fragment the stone make it into powder. and it gets expelled out and this is one of the application that means, I use the impedances to be able to crush the kidney stone. Well, it is not only kidney stone, you know anything, you know there are different applications I can have therefore, but what is central is well the values of the impedances is what decides how much gets reflected, what is the type of uh, uh, reflection what I have, will a compression get reflected as a, as a expansion or rarefaction or will it still persist as an expansion and what gets transmitted into the system. Well, we will pursue on this a little later, but just to say where does this energy come from? If I say well energy is equal to if I say energy which is associated with a wave is equal to let us say the pressure fluctuation into the velocity fluctuation is something like a energy associated. Therefore, therefore, this is sort of the power because we are talking of meter per second, we are talking of Newton per meter square, this is equal to the power density. If I say dt and if I integrate, well this is the type of energy which is coming and therefore, what happens I can I can write u prime as equal to p prime or rather I can write it as p prime square into dt 1 over the impedance of this particular medium what, what is associated let us say rho 0 into A0 is this and this energy is what is dissipated, what, what is used for crushing the stone as it were. Therefore, we tell ourselves well I can use this rarefaction to my advantage in some particular applications. Supposing we were to use some, some material to shield us, suppose I say there is a human being over here and he, he uses for as a shield some particular material say a, a iron or tungsten or a heavy 
medium having a high value of impedance over here, something like let us say an armor. You will recall if, if we, I am sorry the spelling, you use an armor. You know if we read the novels like, uh, like maybe Arthur and his knights and all that, you know they, they ride on horseback with armor and all that. Let us say you have an armor like this and supposing let us say a, a blast wave strikes the armor, what is going to happen? Well, the armor may spall, but we must also remember that the armor is going to transmit the wave into this medium over here. Therefore, the armor what is used may really not be blast resistant. We have to keep this in mind, we will take a look at it in the, in the next lecture, but an armor may not really be blast resistant. What it resists is maybe if a fragment from the blast comes and hits it, well if the impact is not too high, well it will rebound back. It will help against let us say a secondary effects of a blast rather than the primary effects. That means if I say well I am going to have a bulletproof uh, uh, thing over here which is going to save my car or save my skin, well it may not be very effective for a blast wave, only thing what it does is well it, 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 it protects you against the fragment effects. Well this is all about impedances we have been talking, but you know I also told you that well these expressions are in the limit of weak shocks. Can I really use impedances for strong shocks and I also told you well it is not very wrong to use it. The reason being, let us go back and see how this expression got derived. What did we tell ourselves? Well, I have the medium over here which is propagating at a velocity A0 sound speed and what happens? I wrote the equation when the, the wave is stationary, I have the medium rho 0 coming towards it with a velocity A0 and what happened? In this case, the velocity behind was u that is the particles are following this. In this case, the velocity we called as u1 which is equal to in this frame of reference it is a0 minus u corresponding to this u over here. Now, if we tell ourselves instead of an acoustic wave something like a shock wave is propagating rs dot into a medium could be solid, could be liquid, could be anything over here and then the particles here are following with u and therefore in the frame of reference of the shock stationary, I have R s dot and this medium is now moving with a velocity u 1. You know what did we do in the earlier classes? We got an expression for u 1 as a function of R s dot and what did we get? You got u 1 by R s dot when the shock wave is quite high, let us say a large number, what did we get the value as equal to gamma minus 1 plus 2 over m s square divided by gamma plus 1 m square is high therefore this, this term gets knocked off, this comes out to be for air it is around let us say typically around 6 or so, for different materials the values will be smaller or larger depending on the value of gamma, if gamma is small it tends to be a little larger. Therefore, you have u s by r s dot and now if I am taking if how did we get this value? We said from mass balance equation we were able to we neglected the value of rho prime into u prime that is under this condition we got z is equal to 1 z is equal to rho 0 into a 0. That means we said that the particulate velocity and the density fluctuation is small and now what does it we find? We see that the product of the changed components namely the velocity u prime, the density rho prime, the product of them are still very much smaller than the product of the initial density and the shock velocity. Therefore, I can use the same derivation which I used for acoustic uh, uh, impedance again and therefore, I tell myself well I can I, I now can specify the impedance as something like initial density into something like the shock speed. However, we also note the following. When we derive this expression, let me rub it out and put this again. When we derive the expression for the impedance and we related the reflected pressure 
what did we get it as equal to? We got the reflected pressure as equal to Z B minus Z A divided by Z B plus Z A into the incident value of the pressure, which I can also write as equal to dividing by by Z A I get Z B by Z A minus 1 divided by Z B by Z A plus 1 into the incident pressure. That is the initial shock speed, initial shock pressure and we related it to the reflected pressure. So, also if I look at the transmitted pressure that is P B prime, what is it we get now? We get instead of getting 2 Z B, I get 2 of Z B by Z A divided by Z B by Z A plus 1. Now, what is it we observe? The transmitted pressure and the reflected pressures are ratios of the two impedances Z B by Z A and not the absolute values. And therefore, I can still continue to use Z as equal to rho 0 into A 0 for the given medium and solve my problem. Having said that, let me come back to the last part which I want to do today and therefore, let us visit this problem of formation of craters again in the context of what is being, being transmitted and what is being reflected. Let us revisit this problem of let us say crater, let us put everything together. What is a crater? We said well a crater could be formed on the earth, well it could be a sandy soil, it could be a rocky soil. I could have either a surface burst or I could have an in depth explosion, let us not consider these two things. Let us consider the case where wherein some energy is or an explosion, source of explosion is in the air above the, above the surface of the earth. Let us say it is at some height and the moment an explosion gets originated, what happens? Well, a wave gets transmitted, as time progresses the wave travels forward this is at small time, larger time and let us assume that the explosion is quite powerful, well a wave comes and strikes over here. Now, the impedance of the earth is going to be higher than the impedance of the air above it and therefore, well uh, a shock is transmitted into the, in, in, into the medium, let us say well I have the shock getting transmitted into the medium, the blast wave travels into the medium. But more importantly, well we talk in terms of reflected waves and let us show these reflected waves in red. Let us say reflected waves that is from here, a reflected wave forms over here, a reflected wave travels forward over here, this is the way a reflected wave travels, this is the direction in which the incident wave is traveling. Now there are a few things, at this particular point when I have a strong shock or a strong blast hitting the surface, we told ourselves yesterday, yes the value of the reflected to the value of the pressure behind the incident shock is almost around 8 for that is the over pressure behind the reflected shock is 8 times the over pressure behind the incident shock. Therefore, the pressure over here is extremely, extremely high and because of this high pressure, well this blast goes here, stronger strength we also found yes the impedance of this is higher therefore, the pressure wave is quite strong and this because of this high pressure over here I get this reflected wave. You also will remember that in yesterday's class we defined, we determined the temperature behind the, in the wave behind the incident wave for strong values for Mach number of 10, the value was around something like 5845 Kelvin let us say around 6000 Kelvin. And therefore, you know the reflected shock is now traveling in a medium whose temperature is already increased because of the incident wave. Because of this temperature increase, the sound velocity in the medium is high and therefore, this reflected wave now travels quite fast, it travels faster than the incident waves which are traveling forward, these are the incident waves which are traveling forward. Therefore, the reflected wave travels faster than the incident wave. And since it travels faster, as the incident wave is coming over here, what happens is that the reflected wave travels faster 
and in fact it overtakes the incident wave and what a person sees far away, he sees the signature of the reflected wave and not the incident wave which strikes the earth. And now let us take a look at what is going to happen. Now let me extrapolate this over here. Let me put these lines in a, in a better fashion, in more, more spherical. I have this line coming over here. I have this line coming over here. And still it goes further and it comes over here. When I have these high pressure coming over here, I also get some waves in this, something like seismic waves which travel along the surface of the earth. I have these transmitted waves which are traveling over here. And now I find that well the reflected waves are overcoming over here, they are strong. And because of the expansion behind the reflected wave, well it takes the particles out over here, it, it sort of sucks the particles and the particles are pushed over here, something like this. And therefore, the situation what I get above the surface of the earth is, well, the particulates are taken out over here. I get the reflected wave signature over here. This looks something like that mushroom. It looks like a mushroom cloud. It is in the shape of a mushroom, something like this and therefore, I get something like this, the things are taken care of and I have a cloud over here from the reflected wave and what the signature what gets is from the reflected pressure, the, the destruction is much more than from the incident wave which one does not even see, point one. Second is, let us take a look at what happens here. The transmitted wave goes over here, the transmitted wave well compresses the material over here, behind it there is an expansion wave and you know the, 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 this, this material fragments over here and because of the expansion the material gets thrown over here, a crater is formed that means I have a crater, the, the material gets thrown over here, comes over here, a lip of the crater is formed over here and therefore I have a diameter of the crater which is formed with a lip over here and this is how in the earth I have spalling and ultimately I have a crater of diameter d, d naught formed which we said is proportional to the explosion length. Therefore, an explosion above the surface of the earth looks like a mushroom cloud and this is a signature of an explosion, we must keep it in mind. Therefore, with this background, if we were to put things on impedances together, you know there are certain parts in our body which contain air water and let us say the flesh around it. Let us say it contains the air, it contains some water, it contains fat tissues and bones and all that. Therefore, you know whenever the, the, the material contains air in addition to water and tissues, if I say water and I have tissues, well the impedances is not that, that different because we find that impedances of the same order. But if I have something like air over here, there is radical change in this and because of this what would happen? I could have destruction of the materials because of the expansion and pulling that is the small type of failure and therefore, you know the organs of the body which contain air are maybe here you have a drum and you also have lung, our lung which contains air and water. You also have something let, let, let me try to put the third thing, you have the gastro intestinal tract which also contains air in, in addition to the, the liquids what it contains and therefore, whenever you have this air in the medium, you know it is most susceptible to blast failure because of the expansion waves associated with the reflection after the compression waves which result in failure and therefore, these you know the, the damage of ear, the damage of lung the damage of gastrointestinal tract in our human body is something which blast wave is very capable of doing. In fact, you know if you look at a human being, you know he does not seem to be materially affected, you know he is still there as one single piece, but these, these particular organs get drastically affected. Therefore, 
what is it we have done today? Let us quickly summarize what we have done before we, we tell what we must be doing in the next class. In today's class, we started off with impedances of different bodies. We looked at how impedances will affect how much of the of the shock wave gets transmitted into the second medium and how much of it gets reflected. We also found if the impedance of the second body is less than the impedance of the first body, well what gets reflected back is not a compression wave or is not a shock which is which can compress the body, but which expands it and this in a, in a particular body of dimensions a uh, uh, given dimension is capable of causing damage by the tensile failure, point 1. Point 2, yes we now know how to calculate the transmission and the reflection and we applied it, we said well uh, it, it has been used for, for fragmenting the kidney stones. It, in, in practice if I have something, supposing I want to, I, 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 I want to protect my house over here let us say. If I want to protect my house, well it is not sufficient for me if I just put some material over here which is a heavy material and which will withstand because the wave can still transmit over here and I can still have blast damage for the inner things. That means the choice of blast resistant materials requires some choice and we also find that materials which have low impedances like I use sponge material let us say. The sponge material is something similar to a muscle material, you know it can, it can fail, but it can absorb the blast wave. Therefore, with this I stop here and in the next class what we do is we will look at mechanism of how a blast wave destroys objects, we will look at maybe the overpressure, impulse and also a little bit on the impedances. We will summarize what we have learnt in blast waves and try to do one or two small model problems. Well, thank you then, thank you.